Hi, good morning everyone. Welcome to episode 29 of the Knitting Expat podcast. My name is Mina and this week's episode is coming to you from Oman in the Middle East. Uh, those of you who are returning viewers will, will know that my husband and I are currently on holiday in Oman for a few days and those of you who are new I've just had that. So um, welcome to all new and returning viewers. Thank you so much for checking me out and uh, spending some time with me today. I'm actually recording a day early. Today is Sunday the 27th of September. I normally record on Mondays, but um, because we are leaving, we're checking out tomorrow um, and you know, in the afternoon and heading back to Dubai. I didn't, Dubai? <laughs> Bahrain. Um, I didn't want to uh, run the risk of not being able to get the podcast up, so I just wanted to get it recorded a day early and just make sure I had it up for you guys. Um, yeah, so like I said, my name is Mina. You can find me on Ravelry as Mina86. The, you can find the podcast group on Ravelry as the Dating Expat Podcast. Um, you can find me on Instagram as Mina Philip. I'm also on Periscope as Mina Philip. I haven't done anything on Periscope yet. Um, I'm not entirely sure how I feel about Periscope. I've heard good and bad things about it, and I'm still sort of reserving judgment. I've been, I've been struggling to keep up with all the podcasts that I follow recently as it is, and I've just not really been able to keep up with Periscope as well, so I'm sort of a bit umming and ahhing on that one, still not 100% sold, but I am on there if you wanna follow me. And I also sell project bags on Etsy as Mina makes, and think that pretty much covers everything oh and you can find show notes for this podcast and all other episodes on the knitting expat.wordpress.com blog and and yeah okay I think that now covers everything <laughs> for those of you who are new um, and may not know this uh, I live in Bahrain with my husband we've been living in the Middle East for four years now this week actually is our four-year anniversary of moving to the Middle East um, we lived in Dubai first and then we moved to Bahrain and we're just on holiday at the moment in Oman. <laughs> um, right, and I just wanted to say thank you so much to everybody who wished me a happy birthday on my birthday. Um, it was my birthday on Thursday that's so just gone. And I turned 29. I don't think I've ever officially told you guys how old I am. You, some of you may have figured it out um, from things that I've said in the past, but I've never, I don't think I've ever like officially put it out there, <laughs> but I'm 29 now. And um, and yeah, so <laughs> uh, we we decided to come away for a few days to Oman just because it was, was the Eid holidays um, the last few days. And my husband had a bit of time off work when the office was closed for Eid. So, um, so we decided to make the most of it and go somewhere to relax and not do much. And I'll talk more about our trip later in the episode. Um, and so yes, like I was saying, thank you to everyone who wished me a happy birthday and thank you especially to those of you who um, gifted me patterns on my birthday through ra Ravelry. I really didn't expect that, so thank you so much, that was so sweet of you and um, I really appreciated it. Um, and on to some more happy news for you guys this time. I have a discount code for you this week. Um, Laurie of the Cowtown Colorworks podcast has got in touch with me to offer you all a coupon code uh, for her Etsy shop. It's a 15% discount and uh, the discount code is HAPPY4, so that's um, with a capital H, all one word, HAPPY4 and the H is capitals. I'll have that in the show notes and on the episode thread in Ravelry. Um, she and her co-host Heidi um, have a relatively new podcast, they're only eight episodes in, and they have an Etsy shop called Cowtown Colourworks and I'll link that in the show notes and on the Ravelry thread as well. And she currently has project bags and, and yarn, hand-dyed yarn in her shop, but she tells me that they will be bringing, including starting to add other knitting related items to the shop soon. And this code Happy Fall will give you 15% discount on her Etsy shop and it is valid until the 17th of October 2015. So go check it out. She has some really cute Halloween project bags in there at the moment. So uh, make sure you go over and give her some support. Right, so moving on to the, the knitting part of things. The first thing I've got to show you is a finished object in one of my 
early Mina makes bags. This is my one and only finished object for this week and it is a pair of socks which I'm sure you guys are not surprised at at all. There we go. Oh, one's upside down. Finished pair of vanilla socks with a fish lips, ki fish lips kiss heel. I love this colourway. It's so beautiful. How perfectly autumnal is that? So pretty. And this is this yarn is Bear and Buller, Barefoot Sock in her September Forest colourway. It's the little yarn scrap that I keep with my um, either ball bands or little cards that come with the yarn. And this is what I have left of the yarn that's caked up. I, I knit my socks two at a time from the cuff down. Um, so I split my yarn into two 50 gram balls. Um, I've had several questions from people about how I knit my socks and I have explained it on previous episodes but um, the gist of it is I knit, I start, I knit one cuff then I move that cuff onto, um, I, I use DPNs as sort of stitch holders for socks so I'm, I'll move these onto a couple of DPNs to hold the stitches and then I'll knit the second cuff then I'll knit the second cuff and then once I get the second cuff finished I put the first cuff back onto the same circular needles with the second cuff so I then have two cuffs and I knit down the leg together and then when I get to the heel I like a fish lips kiss heel just because it fits nicely and it's easy to do when you're doing socks two at a time um, so then you just you knit one heel completely and then you knit the next heel and you don't have to separate the socks. I have done two at a time cuff down socks with um, a heel flap and gusset before but I find that it becomes really tight and really difficult to do it two at a time so at that point I would again put one sock onto DPNs, do the heel and gusset decreases on one then move that onto DPNs, put the first one back on, knit the heel and gusset decreases, and then put them back on the same needle together to knit the foot. Obviously that takes more time, it's a little bit more time consuming to do it that way. The fish lips kiss heel just goes a bit faster for me. So that's what I do. And then basically, so I knit one heel, knit the second heel, they're both still on the same needles, and then I just keep going, I knit the foot, and then I do a rounded toe and I haven't washed or blocked these yet so they're still a little bit and I love how these have turned out I love this colorway it's so beautiful like I said it's called September Forest and these are my birthday socks I cast these off on Thursday on my birthday I bound them off rather and yeah just love that love those colors together so perfect and yeah so those are my birthday socks and that is also Pair number 22, 22 socks so far this year, um, and I still have quite a few more that I need, that I say need, I want to knit this year for people. Um, next project is in another one of my Mina Makes bags. It's one of my fruit salad bags. And this has my Summertide Mystery Knit Along project in it. And this is a, um, Mystery Knit Along by um, Helen Stewart of the Curious Handmade podcast and I am knitting mine with, let me just pick this out quickly, I'll show you the yarn first, um, ooh, I'm knitting mine out of Madeleine Tosh Light, never knit with this yarn before so I'm really excited to give this one a go. So I'm knitting it in the Cove colourway which is this one, a really beautiful sort of tonal sea colours like greens and blues and bits of brown in there. See that? Oh, really good lighting here at the moment. I've got the window to, our, to the balcony of our room to the side of me and it's giving me really good lighting for this. And the other colourway I'm using is this beautiful sort of golden yellow colour which is Mad Tosh Light in Candlewick. And one thing I always do with my yarn before I start a project is I actually, I weigh it once it's been caked up and then I write, I'll make a note of what the actual weight is. So this is supposed to be a 100 gram skein, cake or whatever, of yarn. When I weighed it after it was caked up, I actually had 113 grams, so this one is quite a bit over, 
whereas um, this one was 107 grams, so not as much. It's, I mean, they're both over 100 grams, so that's great, but um, it just means you know more accurately what your yardage is and how much you've used. Um, right, so that's for the, that's the yarn. And I'm really enjoying knitting with the Matosh Light. It's really been quite enjoyable to knit with. I really love knitting with singles and um, I'm really enjoying knitting with this one, which is also a singles yarn. Uh, I'm knitting this on four millimeter needles, which is what the pattern calls for. Now I've finished clue three. Um, I actually finished clue three on, I started it on Friday and finished it Friday. Uh, it was really, for me, it was really fun. It was a really sort of intuitive clue and the instructions were quite easy to memorize and just carry on with. Having said that, <laughs> I did make a mistake in the first row and I didn't realize until I was halfway through the third row, which meant I had to tink back almost all of what I'd done. <laughs> so uh, that took a while, but I did still manage to finish it on the same day. And for those of you who are knitting this and don't want to see what it looks like, uh, you can sort of skip forward for about 20 seconds or so. I'm not going to describe anything about the stitch pattern, I'm just gonna show it really quickly. And you probably won't be able to see much because it's all scrunched up on my needles anyway. But for those of you who do want to see, this is what it looks like. If you don't want to see, you should sort of like look away now. This is currently what it looks like. The green marker is where I was last time. And last time I didn't really show it to you properly either. I just sort of scrunched it up to show you. And it's actually this way around. So this would be the top. And that's... So this top section was clue one. And this beginning section, this section here is clue two. And then all of this section is clue three. It doesn't look like much yet, but it will be beautiful, I think, when it's finished. And it's looking, okay, if you if you didn't want to see this all, you can look back now. Um, this, is what, this is what it currently looks like, all scratched up. And I love these two colors together. I think they go beautifully. And I'm really enjoying this knit. Like I said, the pattern is really easy to follow. The instructions are relatively simple. They're nothing too complicated. Even for a first time lace knitter, I'd say this is a pretty good project. Um, and I'm enjoying it. I'm really enjoying it. I'm looking forward to seeing what this looks like at the end. And uh, and yeah, it's looking like it's gonna be quite a sizable project. At the end of clue three, you have almost 400 stitches, close to 400 stitches on the needle. So. This is going to be quite a sizable shawl, I think, by the time it's done. Okay, and then the next project I have to show you is in this bag here, another one of my Mina Makes project bags. And this one is the Dew Drops Shawl by Bex Hopkins. This is a free pattern on Ravelry. And I don't have a good picture because my printer went a bit funny when I printed this, but that's kind of what it's going to look like basically a stockinette body with a lace edging, lace border, or a lace edge rather. And that is being knit. I'm knitting that out of this beautiful, and I didn't bring the tag with me, but I have got it at home. This is dye for yarn. Sorry. This is dye for yarn. This is their 100% tussle silk lace weight. And I believe the colorway is called Hot Desire. Beautiful, beautiful, rich red color. So this is 100% tussled silk. It's the first time I've knit with tussled silk or anything that's pure silk yarn. And um, it's been an interesting experience knitting with this yarn. And this is on my um, high, high needles, 3.75 millimeters, which is what the pattern calls for. The little orange marker is where I was last time. And that's how much I've knit, a couple of inches, not a massive amount because this, well, like I said, it's lace weight. I am already at over, what's my current stitch count? Uh, I'm already at almost, I'm almost at 300 stitches on the needles already. Um, this shawl's gonna be pretty big, I think, by the time it's done. This will be the top edge. I can't stretch it out much, but you can already see this is getting to be quite long. Um, I'm using my little unicorn stitch markers by Andy of Andre Sunits. Keep those. And and yeah. 
And onto the first lace chart, there are several lace charts that you go through for the to create the edging pattern. And I'm just ready to start the first one. So this is this is the shawl that I knit on once I finished the clue for the Summertide Mystery Knit Along. And this is the one I knit on in between to keep me going. Now I said that this is my first time knitting with the, with the silk, 100% silk yarn, and it's Tussa Silk. And I've found that Tussa Silk is more sticky, more grabby on the needles than um, any other yarns that I've knit with that has had silk in it. Uh, which is why I ended up switching to metal needles. It was I did start this on wooden needles, but I had to switch because it was too sticky and it wasn't sliding easily enough and it was getting difficult to knit with. But I am enjoying it and it's getting easier now that I'm kind of getting into the flow of how to tension the yarn and hold in sort of like tension my stitches. But I am finding that if my hands are feeling clammy or I'm feeling a little bit hot, this is a hard one to knit on because the stitches sort of get tighter and it's just a little bit uncomfortable to knit with. It's not only terrible and it will get knit. But um, like I said, the mystery knit along is the first mystery knit along I've done. And I don't think a shawl has ever taken me this long to knit. It's never taken me a month to knit a shawl. So it's um, it's interesting. Like I've, I kind of got to the end of the clue and I'm like, I want to keep going. I want to knit the next bit, but you can't. So I have the other one to keep me uh, going on the shawl front. Uh, next up in this little orange bag of loveliness, which is a Japanese knot bag by Sue of the Tangled CA is the Etsy shop, but she is one of the co-hosts of the um, Two Tangled Skeins podcast um, based out of Canada. This is her little label, the Tangled Skein. And in this bag, we did a little swap a while ago. And in this bag, I have this beginnings. I say the beginnings. Good chunk of my uh, Phoenix hat. This is a pattern by Sally Jane Cameron of the Pink Hair Girls podcast. And my little stitch mark is turned around the wrong way. Okay, doesn't want to cooperate, it's a little cat. There we go. And yeah, I'm really enjoying it so far. Uh, this, I basically, I'd started this the night before we left. I'd only done a couple of rows to get me started. And I knit most of this whilst um, on our way here. And I pretty much haven't touched it since we got here. This is my travel project. And I think I will probably have this finished. I'm keeping this for traveling on the way back as well because these needles were fine to get on a plane with. And I know I've said before I don't normally take metal needles on the plane and I don't, but these needles I don't mind in case if they get taken away from me because there are these cheap um, Chinese, oh that's upside down, Chinese needles that I got, for, got off Amazon or something. I got them in bulk for like really cheap and I got a whole bunch of different sizes. So this is being knit on 2.75 millimeter, um, 16 inch small circular needles. And yeah, it's really enjoyable. The, sh the, the tips on these aren't the sharpest, but they're sharp enough. And um, like I said, they're really lightweight, these needles. And again, I'm more than happy to take these on a plane with me and have them taken away from me by security because I am not precious about these at all. So that's the only reason I take these on a plane. Otherwise, I wouldn't take my high highs. I wouldn't try. I know um, one of my friends, Mel in Dubai, she's taken a high highs onto planes before, but I, I personally don't want to run that risk in case they ever do take it off me. I've never had anything taken off me on a plane or at an airport, but you know, you never know. And the yarn I am using for this is this Shibui Staccato, which is 70% superwash merino, 30% silk. It's beautiful. It's only 50 grams per skein, but it's 175 meters. And I did look around on the projects to see how much people use to make their hats. And it seems that for the adult small size, I was gonna have more than enough to knit out of 50 grams of this yarn. So that's the size I'm knitting. And if it turns out to be a bit small for my head or something, then I'll gift it to someone. Otherwise, um, otherwise I'll keep it, I think. And although my, I'm doing this as a center port cake, and as much as I love my um, my ball my ball winder, and I do, it is amazing. 
um, I think this is just the nature of this particular yarn, but I have no idea how this happened. It started out as a normal looking cake, and then as I've been going on, it has turned into this. It's still perfectly fine, it's still pulling out the centre normally, but I've never had a cake of yarn do that to me before. <laughs> so, um, anyway, I'm enjoying the pattern. It's pretty easy to knit, knit from. Um, it's all it's all written out. There's no charts for this one. And um, yeah, so far so good. Hopefully I'll have that as a finished object to show you guys next week. And like I said, I purposely didn't um, knit on that anymore. So I'd have it as a travel knitting project for the way back. Um, because most of my other projects that I have going are on needles that I wouldn't want to have taken away from me at the airport. And the only other one that I would take on a plane with me is the summertime mystery knit along and that's because that's on wooden needles but i've already finished that clue and the next one's not coming out till thursday so that's that um trying to make sure i've covered everything i wanted to say about those projects and i have one more project well i say one more two more projects to show you this week the next one is a brand new cast on as well because the phoenix hat was a brand new cast on that you guys hadn't seen but this is another new cast on. <laughs> the needles are poking out straight away. And if you follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen a sneak peek of this. But I have finally cast on my Marco Polo cardigan. I have only been going on about this since I started podcasting in March. Um, I had a couple of people contact me, sending me messages going, are you actually still gonna knit this? I'm like, yes, yes I am. I, I promise I am gonna be knitting this. And Trying to find a good picture to show you what it looks like. Okay, this isn't the best picture. This, you're not really going to get much from this, it's just the pattern information. But it's this sort of like slouchy, easy to wear cardigan. Sorry, I'm trying to excuse my scribbles on that drawing, but that's what it looks like. It's a nice, sort of like slouchy, easy going cardigan. And I picked this cardigan pattern to knit for a number of reasons. One, I had the right yarn for it. I think I have the right yarn for it. It's um, a sort of like easy going sweater. It's got stripes. I like stripes. I pretty much always, uh, most of the cardigans I've knit so far have been striped. Um, at least the last two I've knit have been striped. And I've, um, it's got the contiguous sleeve method, which I enjoy. And I've done that a couple of times before, so that was interesting to me. I've, I've, I've enjoyed this. It's interesting because it's it's a little bit fiddly the first few rows because you are with the contiguous sleeve method. Um, you are increasing on every side, so on right side and wrong side rows. So it can get a little bit fiddly, and sometimes it gets a little bit tight doing that. But once you get past the first few rows, it's it's really interesting to see how the sleeve develops and I posted a little sneak peek on Instagram yesterday that I'd started this but what I didn't show you is how far I got <laughs> even I was a little bit surprised by how far I managed to get on this considering I only started this yesterday um, around midday and by about 12 hours later because <laughs> I was literally knitting on this until um, until I went to bed about half half 11 last night. I separated for the sleeves and I did about an inch underneath after. So you stripe this every few rows. You don't want to give too much of the pattern away. Um, so you switch colors every few rows. And I'm just I've separated for the sleeves. I'm still doing increases for the front of the, for the front sides. And then once I've done that, it's just going to be straight stocking it down and then some increases for the waist. And I've put my um, sleeve, I always do this, my sleeve stitches, I put them on spare cables um, rather than on uh, scrap yarn because it's much easier to just knit off the cape, sorry, to knit off the cable needle than it is to try and pick up the stitches from scrap yarn. Um, at least I find anyway. And the sets of um, those sort of like Chinese needles I told you I got off Amazon, 
They actually come with needle sizes all the way down to one millimeter, I think, or one and a half millimeter, which is ridiculously tiny and probably I will never knit with anything that fine. Um, so those are actually really good for just holding sleeve stitches or holding stitches in general. I'll show you quickly what this looks like. Sorry, it's probably not the best shirt to be wearing with this, but you kind of get the idea of how this is going to be. Sorry, my, my shirt is quite slouchy, so it's not sitting well with this. But this will be the, make sure that's sitting right, there we go. That'll be the start of this. So there'll be a few more increases on the front. And then this is like sort of straight knitting down and then some waist increases for the hips. Yeah, I'm really enjoying how this is looking. It's been a really easy knit so far. It's plain stock and knit. And whilst the pattern is written for two colors, to be striped in two colors, as you can tell, I'm striping with three colors because that is what I had to get the correct amount of yardage for the design. Um, and the yarn that I'm using is, you guys will laugh at me, but, but this is true. And this is some of my oldest yarn in my stash. <laughs> Is, is this yarn. Oh, I just dropped my knits. Oh, sorry. Dropping stuff everywhere. Ah, my background's falling down. Duh. This is what happens when you podcast in an unfamiliar environment. Um, so these are the yarns I'm using. These are the colors I'm using. So I have four skeins of the gray. Let me show them to you in the skeins. I have four skeins of the grey, two each of the purple and the teal colour. And as you can see on this one, it is Camgarn. Camgarn. It is um, made by the same company that does the Icelandic Gloppy yarn. It's all the same Istex um, brand of uh, Loppy. And I got this in Iceland last year in December. This is literally the oldest yarn that I own <laughs> in terms of um, when I purchased them. It's not even a year old yet and this is technically the oldest stash I have. And um, it's 150 meters to 50 grams, this one. And it's just roughly somewhere between a sport and a DK weight yarn. Um, I think it's more of a sport weight than a DK. It's not quite plump enough to be a DK, I don't think. And the pattern calls for sport or DK weight yarn to be knit at a loose gauge. So it's knit on four millimeter needles. And to give us, to give the slouchy loose effect. This is non superwash yarn, so it shouldn't grow that much. I'm not knitting a particularly slouchy version of this cardigan. I'm knitting it mostly to my size, but I've decided to do the sleeves a bit larger. So I'm, I'm knitting the chest I, was, I started knitting it to my chest me measurements because I wanted the shoulders to fit nicely. I didn't want overly slouchy sl shoulders. But, the, but then I did sleeve increases up to the next, for the next size up. Um, and then I'm doing the front increases for the next size up and the rest will be in pattern as it is. I just wanted the shoulders to be an, a good fit and from what I've read, the last cardigan I did with the contiguous sleeve method was the uh, Stripes Gone Crazy. And I love that cardigan and I will I wear it when I, when I travel a lot, but um, the shoulders are a little bit, they don't, it doesn't fit as well as I would have liked. It's perfectly fine, it's a nice slouchy cardigan. But, um, but I realized afterwards that I probably should have knit the shoulders to, um, for the size below, which which would have been closer in um, to my actual measurements, and then I could have knit the rest of the body to the next size up, and still had that sort of nice slouchy feel to it. But the shoulders would have fit better. So that's what I'm trying with this one, and I will let you guys know how this turns out. I really hope it works. Um, it was my first time knitting a garment out of non superwash yarn. It's I did swatch for this way back when in March, and I know you shouldn't rely on old swatches, but I'll just show you my swatches really quickly. This was swatched on four and a half millimeter needles, and you can see it's quite gappy. You can, you can pretty much see me through it. 
and then I knit this on four millimeter needles, which is still a bit airy, but not as not as gappy as this one. I did actually start this on four and a half millimeter needles because I'd done the calculations and I figured out that um, I could knit a size smaller with the four and a half millimeter to still get the right size for me. But I started knitting it and like five rows in, I was like, no, this is just too loose. So I ripped it out and I started again on four millimeter needles. And I'm liking how this is looking. It is still pretty loose, but the pattern is intended for this to be knit at a loose gauge. Um, and I've realized as well that I knit these on wooden needles, these swatches, and I am knitting the cardigan on metal needles. And that is fine. I am more than happy with that. And I kind of took that into consideration and thought, okay, well, that will make it even slightly looser, which will mean that it's, um, it will have the right amount of slouch, considering this isn't a superwash yarn. So I'm kind of balancing some of that. I guess in some way and I'm using these pretty stitch markers that I showed you guys a couple weeks ago little seahorse and this pretty butterfly that will turn around and I have more on the other side of the cardigan jeez, oh, there we go and these are a very sweet birthday present from Tanya who I met up with while I was in New York so thank you very much and they're very sweet and I love them and now I've got needles poking everywhere so that's it for the Marco Polo. I'm really enjoying that. I'm just going to give up with this background. It's going to slide down now, I think. Um, I'm really enjoying it. Like I said, I knit all of that in one day. But I don't normally have a whole day of, do it's gone. of doing nothing other than knitting when I'm at home. So I made the most of the opportunity whilst I'm going to give up on that. Um, made the mo most of the opportunity that I had whilst we were away to do that. Right, and the last knitting thing I have to show you, you guys may be surprised by this. Yes, I brought my Cozy Memories blanket with me. I thought I might get a few squares in on this whilst we're here, and I did. I got, I got 10 squares done since we got here. And let me get the right bit. Still not woven in any ends, but hey ho, it'll happen. And I'm showing you the pack. Of course I am. Here we go. I've added in these 10 squares, so this, these five from here to here, and these ones from here to here. I started this end, so this is where I started from. So these two, this sort of tonal purple and this yellow are from Carolyn, who does the Zazu podcast, and Zazu yarns. So those are from her. And then I've got these two, and these are unnamed colorways, like one of a kind, so that she's done for mini skeins. And these two are mini skeins from Kristen on Full and Vine and the Yarngasm podcast. And this top one is her reflector colorway on Blitzed. So this is her sparkle base. You can sort of see the sparkle there. I don't know if you can tell very well, but there is sparkle in that. And this bottom one is her succulents base and I think this one is on uh, this was on Volka Volka I think and this was just slightly short for my square so I added a little bit scrap of another yarn that I had with me but I like how that one turned out that's really nice and soft I think that is her Volka base which is her MCN base which is really lovely and this next six I've knit are all uh, from the lemonade shop the toxic raindrops raindrops lemon drops that I showed you guys last week that I won in the Instagram giveaway so these are all the the toxic colorways so there's toxic yellow pink purple green peach and blue and her mini skeins are quite generously sized I had a lot left over there's actually probably enough for at least another square of the size that I make if not more so these will probably go to someone as part of a mini swap or something, I think, because there's loads left over of that. And I am now, let me get this right. I'm, so, I'm showing you the back again. I don't know why I keep doing that. There we go. I'm now at 80 squares. My blanket has been rectangled off like nicely. Um, I got another 
whole bunch of squares to add, but lots of minis to add to this now. And yeah, that's where I am. I've realised I haven't actually shown this to you guys in a while, so I thought I'd bring it along and add some bits to it. I don't have a particular sort of colour scheme or method of adding yarns to the to my blanket. I'm kind of this is my least thought out project as it were. I'm trying to do this as minimally uh, planned out as possible. Normally my stuff is really well planned out and really well thought out. That's kind of just the way I like to do things. But with that one I'm trying to just be really relaxed about it. And I'm, um, I don't know if I mentioned, I'm knitting it with three millimeter needles and 49 stitches for my squares. And yeah, I'm really enjoying it. It's coming out so far. It's, it's a nice sort of little blanket size now. And, um, and yeah, I'm trying to think what else was there I was going to mention about it. It's, yeah, so it's the least thought out project I've got going at the moment. What I do try and do is I try and put all the yarns that people have given me. So if someone sent me five mini skeins, I try and put all those five mini skeins into the same row or same section of the blanket. So I know that section or all those yarns were from a certain person and that will help me remember who gave me what. So for the most part, that's what I've done. Um, there are some where that's not what I've done, but for most, that is what I've done. And that's kind of why I group the lemon drops together that way. Um, I know all of those of the same from the same thing um, yeah and that is it for the knitting that is it for what's off my needles and what's on my needles and uh, moving on to uh, knit along news and giveaways so I think all the winners have now got in touch with me from the sunrise shawl giveaway or sorry, prize draws last week. So thank you so much for getting in touch with me. One of the one of them got in touch with me before I left for my trip, so her prize is already in the mail. And the other two, I will have your stuff sent off once I get back. And that should be in the mail to you very shortly. Um, then we have the Rainbow Cal and the September Cal, both of which will end this week, at the end of this week on the 30th of September. So make sure you get all your entries in as soon as you can. I will probably close the thread on the morning of the first so you guys will have the most opportunity, most amount of time to get your stuff in. So make sure you do. And I will be drawing prizes for both those knit alongs the following week. So the following next week's episode is probably going to be pretty heavy with um, prize drawings. I will be drawing all the numbers before I record but um, just because otherwise it will just take forever. And I have the prize winner. I have, to, uh, I'm an, I have already drawn the prize winner for the Agatha Socks pattern that I mentioned to you guys last week. I haven't closed the thread because the entries were done on the episode thread for last week's episode. So um, I've just drawn a winner from that. And the winner was number 46. And thankfully the first number I drew wasn't one of my own entries or wasn't a chatter ent entry, it was an actual entry for the give along, uh, give, give along, <laughs> giveaway, words are failing me. Um, I didn't make it a non-chatter thread because it is an episode thread and I wanted it to be open for chatter. So I just said I would draw a number until I pick one that was an actual entry. And as it happened, it was the first one I picked. So it was number 46 and that was Anne La 1112, 112. Sorry, Anne La 112. She's from Montreal in Quebec, Canada. Um, she doesn't have an actual name on the, her Ravelry page, but um, she's a cute little puppy picture on her Ravatar. And she says, um, I love knitting socks. I love to give them as gifts. And this is why I only have one pair for myself. But one of my goals for next year is to knit them, to knit more for me. So Anne, I assume her name is Anne. Um, I hope you enjoy the Agatha socks and I, I hope you make a pair for yourself. And yeah, so I will ear burn you in the episode thread for last week and Claire from New Hampshire Knits. Um, so she can gift you the, she can give you the Agatha socks pattern. So congratulations Anne and thank you very much to Claire for this giveaway, for sponsoring this giveaway. Um, yeah, 
And the last thing to mention to you guys is the 2000 subscriber giveaway. So I just, I mentioned this last week. I wanted to do a little something as a thank you to everyone who's been so supportive of the podcast, my Etsy shop, and just everything in general that I've been doing over the last few months. And I put together a, a prize package for you all to enter in for. And oh my God, I have been so overwhelmed with all of the responses, all of the entries, all of your comments. The prompt I gave you guys for entry for this giveaway was what would you like to hear or see more of on the podcast? There were a few things I was expecting because I've had people ask about this before. Is like people want to see me knit or people want to see more of the boys. And honestly, wanting wanting to see the boys on the podcast more was probably one of the most requested, was probably the most requested thing. I think almost everyone has said that. Um, definitely on the top of the list. So I will definitely try and do that more. Um, once the entries, once I close the entries for the for the giveaway and have drawn the winner and all, done all of that, I'm going to go through and sort of see what the most popular requests are, and I'm going to try and include and start including some of those into the podcast um, over the coming months. So stay tuned for some hopefully exciting changes. And one of the other um, one of the other things that you guys have been requesting a lot of other than seeing the boys is to see me knit and maybe some tutorials or some tips and tricks and stuff like that and originally I always sort of um, I'm not a hundred percent confident about knitting whilst I'm talking to you guys because like a lot of the, a lot of the other podcasters who have co-hosts you know they take it in turns to talk so they have opportunity to knit in between without you know without having to talk much so um, but I feel like on my own, it's a bit difficult for me to knit and talk consistently enough for this for the podcast to remain interesting. Because, you know, if I drop a stitch or if I make a mistake, I'm suddenly going to be like, okay, I need to stop for a second and fix this. Or if I'm knitting on a complicated pattern, I can't really just, you know. So, but I will be trying to... Um, record some of my knitting to show you guys. Um, my husband reminded me <laughs> the other day, and uh, this is one of the reasons why I love him, that my tripod actually, the center section of the tripod that I have comes out and goes horizontal. So whilst I thought I didn't have the right kind of setup to record, um, you know, myself knitting or tutorial type situations, turns out I do have the right setup for that with my uh, point and shoot camera which does video, um, which can be attached to my tripod. I don't have a right attachment for my phone to do that, but my point and shoot camera does. And so I'm gonna give that a go when I get back. I'm gonna give that a go and see what kind of things that I can do with that. So, so yeah, so stay tuned. Hopefully there will be some some nice changes coming up along that line. Um, so like I said, the prompt for the entry for this giveaway, for the 2000 subscriber giveaway, is what would you like to see and hear more about on the podcast? There are, um, like I said, there's an entry thread on the on the podcast group in Ravelry, and and I'll be drawing the winner for that on the 12th of October on that on that Monday episode. So stay tuned for that. And so like I said. Uh, the boys have been a very popular request so far on that thread and whilst I don't have any footage of them any new footage of them to share with you and they're obviously not here with us um, to sort of bring on camera but what I did find when I, I brought my point and shoot with me to shoot a bit of video around the resort to show you guys and I found I had a few video clips of the boys on there from before we moved to Bahrain from when we were still in Dubai so hopefully <laughs> I'll be able to insert that for you guys here.
So hopefully you just saw some video of the boys being all goofy <laughs> and playing with their favourite toys. And now moving on to the Q&A. I had a few questions in the Q&A thread this week and I thought I'd cover those really quickly here for you guys now. First up was from Kaz63 and she asks, uh, do you have moths out in Bahrain? I asked this as you have your yarns out in the open. I keep my yarn in really useful boxes but still have some lavender bags hanging around too. Uh, that's a good question and I genuinely I didn't know when we first moved here either but I don't think we have the kinds of moths that eat yarn. Um, I believe there's like certain types of moths that do that, not all moths are dangerous as it were and I've not really seen moths where we are at the moment. It's probably because it's the summer and it's maybe too hot for moths. Um, I'm not entirely sure, maybe they'll, I'll see more around the winter time and I'll change my mind about how I store my yarn, but I've not really seen moths around. We do have the geckos and I believe the geckos eat moths, so <laughs> I'm hoping they'll keep my yarn safe. And um, I do also put, I also have a bunch of lavender sachets that I have sort of in between my yarn on my shelves at the moment. But like I said, at the moment I haven't really seen moths, I've not really known for there to be moths where we are and most people have reassured me that there aren't really moths around here that will affect the yarn so it seems to be that it's safe but if I do see moths around then maybe I will start putting, I won't leave my yarn out on display as much um, but like I said for now it seems to be fine and I do put bunches of lavender sachets amongst my yarn and my finished projects anyway as an extra security measure. measure. Then um, Avril, I think that's how you pronounce your name, I'm sorry if I got it wrong. Avril has asked, I'm curious about your life in Bahrain and have a question. From my experience of Arab women, they are generally homebodies and rarely look to know others beyond their extended family circle. So my question is, is it difficult to get to know local people like Bahrainis or are you are your friends fellow migrants? Well. Um, it's funny you should say that. We don't actually have that many friends in Bahrain. We haven't really um, socialised that much, if that makes sense. Just It's been a combination of factors really. One, with Perry working in Saudi Arabia, by the time he gets home, he's pretty knackered. It's usually quite late by the time he gets back in the evenings. And so midweek socialising with other people is basically non-existent. And then the weekends are is our downtime again he's usually pretty tired after a week of work so he's not overly enthusiastic about doing too much stuff so we haven't done too much socializing to be honest the people we have socialized with so far have been um uh, some of perry's work colleagues who also work in um in saudi arabia but live in bahrain um a couple of them are bahraini as it happens um i don't think there is, it is as difficult to get to meet other Bahraini people in Bahrain as it is potentially to socialise with Emirati people in the UAE. Um, in Bahrain, the Bahrainis are a lot more, um, I'm trying to think of the right word to say, I guess down to earth might be the right phrase. They are more likely, you know, they do do the regular jobs like most of the taxi drivers in Bahrain are Bahraini. Most, you know, you'll get people who are Bahraini who work in the shops and in restaurants and, you know, people you'll see face to face in regular jobs. Whereas in the UAE, you wouldn't get an Emirati as a, as a taxi driver. You wouldn't get an Emirati person as a waiter in a restaurant. Um, they, you know, if they do work, they would have more senior roles. They would, um, most Emirati people who do work, work in government jobs public sector jobs so um, in that respect it's different. I find the Bahrainis are really friendly people when you do chat to them if you do get to catch a taxi or where, wherever you happen to meet them they're always really quite friendly. I've never had any trouble um, so yeah I'm not sure if that really answers your question very well. Um, I don't really just because I don't really know that many people where we are I don't really feel like I can um, answer that question too too well yet. I'm hoping, I mean the other reason as well is it's been the summer so it's not really been all that enticing to want to go out too much anyway and Perry and I ourselves are pretty much homebodies 
we like being at home, we like just sort of relaxing and hanging out together and doing doing stuff at home. Um, so, so yeah. So I'm sorry if that doesn't answer your question very well. Maybe I'll come back to that at some point in the future. I'm hoping once the weather cools down a bit, we'll be more inclined to want to go out and about a bit more and um, maybe socialise a bit more as well. Um, and we'll see how that goes. Then next question was from Brenda369 on Ravelry. She says that I love the Rose City Rollers you knit with mini skeins. You said that you magic knotted the yarn together. My question is, what did you do when you came to a knot when knitting the socks? Did you continue knitting when you got to the knot or did you cut the knot and weave in the ends? Thanks. Well, Brenda, the, the whole point of magic knotting the yarn together is so that you wouldn't have to weave in ends. So yeah, I just knit straight through them. When I did finish the socks and I showed them on the podcast, I also explained this, that um, the process of magic knotting the yarn is, um, basically secures it, it's a secure knot that shouldn't, if you do it correctly, shouldn't come undone. And see, that's what I've done and that's worked out well for me so far. But like I've always said before, I don't wear my socks too hard because I don't wear my socks and shoes every day. I don't wear them out and about all the time because I just, just don't. I tend to wear sandals a lot. So I wear my socks mostly at home or if I'm going on holiday. Um, then Patinka, on Ravelry asked, I would love to hear how you knit your socks. I remember on one of your podcasts you said you start them separately, move them onto Magic Leap, but after a few rounds, how is this done? Also, why do you always use fish lips? Kiss heels. I'm thinking of trying that heel, bought the pattern, but was intimidated by the patent 16 pages. Um, so yeah, so Patinka, actually, if you were listening from the beginning of the podcast, you'll have heard me talk about how I knit my socks. And the reason I use the Fish Lips Kiss Heel is just because I, I like the heel, I like how it fits, I like how it looks. It doesn't leave me with gappy bits on the sides. And it's quick, I've memorized it now and it's pretty quick. And honestly, you don't need to you don't need to bother with a lot of the bluff in the pattern. The actual pattern is only a couple of pages long, so once you've done it a couple of times, you've pretty much memorized it. So I don't think that it's much to, anything to be intimidated by. So give it a go if you want to try it out. And yeah, so I think that's it for the questions. Moving on to shop update stuff. There is still the Etsy discount code and the Ravelry discount code for the project bags and my patterns online. And that is 20 off, and that's off, O-F-F, -F, all capitals. That'll give you 20% off any of the bags in my Etsy shop until the 30th of, the se of September. So make sure you run along and check that out. And also 20 off will give you 20% off my patterns in my Ravelry store and that is also valid until the 5th of October. So make sure you go and take take opportunity of those discount codes. I will have a new shop update hopefully by this weekend. I have a bunch of bags that are pretty much ready. I just need to um, finish them off basically. They just need their corners done and, and turned and ironed. And, all the finishing done for them which shouldn't take me too long once I get back I just didn't get around to doing it in time before we left so I don't actually have um, anything to show you I, I did say last week that hopefully if I'd got them finished in time I'd be able to film a bit to show you what the bags will look like or what the bags are the fabrics are but I don't didn't actually get around to that before we left so unfortunately I don't have a little preview for you guys this week but I will be posting pictures on Instagram once I get back, so make sure you check it out there. Um, and like I mentioned last week as well, I'm happy to take custom orders for bags if there's anything in particular that you would like. You can either contact me on Ravelry via private message or on Etsy through the conversations feature. I will probably be cutting fabric um, at the weekend. Um, or towards the weekend so if there is anything you're interested in please let me know this week that way I can make sure to cut up the fabric for that bag and do you a custom order otherwise it'll probably have to wait until the next round of fabric cutting like I mentioned last week I do my fabric cutting in batches just because it is easier on my back that way um, okay and I will now go back to me from last week where I filmed the acquisition segment for this week's episode um, last week because I didn't want to bring all the yarn with me here to show you guys because it seemed a little bit ridiculous to do that. So I will insert that um, clip here for you guys. 
Hi again. So I'm coming to you from back home in Bahrain whilst um, I think this week's episode is being filmed in Oman. So acquisitions. Right. So this week, like I said last time, this is going to be my London stuff. There is one thing in here that is not from London stuff, but it's relevant. And uh, yeah, so um, my mum completely spoiled me for my birthday this year. She, she gave me a very beautifully packaged stash of fabric. And so I thought I'd just quickly show you what she gave me. And these will be coming up in the shop as project bags at some point. So first up is some lovely Christmas fabric, which I am showing to you upside down this way. So yep, yeah, each other is really cute, really, really cute. And oh, some more Christmas fabric. She got me this, oh, here we go. Santa and Rudolph print, which is so adorable. I really like this one. So these will be project bags soon, hopefully in time for Christmas. Um, there's some Humpty Dumpty nursery round fabric. There's not a lot of this one. This one is a smaller cut. So there'll only be probably a couple of bags out of this one. But it's so sweet. I love Humpty Dumpty. There is this one. This is so cute. I love this little girls and little bird cages. I think it's almost got like a Japanese feel to it. And some more cute birds in cages. These are sweet. Again, this is a smaller cut, so there'll be only a couple bags of that one. There is some of this slightly glittery as well, I think, glittery fairy fabric, which is really sweet as well. Quite whimsical. Then this is my absolute favorite one. And it's a Riley Blake print as well as it happens. And it's rainbow unicorns. I mean, come on, could this not be more perfect? So those will definitely be bags. And there will definitely be one for me from this because rainbow unicorns, I mean, come on. Uh, there is this print, this red poppies, which I really love. I think that's really beautiful. Quite a classic sort of flower print. And this one made me laugh because I have a fat quarter of this fabric. Owls, which is actually already cut up, ready to be made into bags. It's all, it's going to be one of the bags in the next update will be in this print, but now I have more. So there will be more owl print bags coming soon. There is this cute little, almost like kid drawn houses with rainbows, which I also really love. And I think that's really sweet. And some more bird and cage fabrics. The, the other one I showed you was a larger, larger print version of these ones, which I think is really cute. So that is, sorry about the rustling, a lot of fabric to add to my stash and to be made into bags for you guys. So I am really excited about that. So thank you very much to my mom for that. Um, apologies for very quick rustling. Rustling over. Next up is what my parents-in-law gave me for my birthday and they were very, very sweet and got me a huge variety of self-striking sock yarn. And this is the Serdar Heart and Soul sock yarn, which I've knit with before. I've knit two socks out of this stuff before. And you can see all five colorways. And this is the one that I've knit socks out of before. So I may use this skein for a giveaway at some point. Um, so one of you guys can get have a go at knitting some of this yarn. And this is num shade number 107. This one is shade number 102. They don't have names, just shade numbers. And these are 410 meters. Um, for 100 grams, 75% wool, 25% nylon. This one is shade number 53, I think. It's kind of covered by a sticker. I think it's 53 or 58. I really like this one. This is shade number 50. Really pretty pinks and greens. And this one is another favorite of mine. It reminds me of tropical fruits, don't know why. This is shade number 101. So five skeins of 
Self striping sock yarn. Stop one. Yay! So that's really fun. And I am now restocked completely on my self striping sock yarn. And they also got me with all the best intentions, but I'm not entirely sure what they thought I was going to do with this. Um, the Woolly Woofers book by Debbie Bliss. 20 knitwear designs for dogs. I think they thought that she's, uh, my mother-in-law said she thought that I could adapt these into um, jumpers for the boys, but they barely let me put a hat on them. They, <laughs> I can't imagine them letting me put a jumper on them, but we'll see. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with this yet. But it's a very sweet book. Uh, it's got some really cute pictures in here. I'm trying to find one to show you. There's a really adorable one of a pug in a bee outfit, which is just, well, there's these ones. They're wearing these adorable little like, sort of like Aaron sweater style. Look at those faces. I love pugs. They're so adorable. I just think they have the cutest little face. Where is it? This one. How sweet is that little pug? Although Perry says he looks really sad. He does look a little bit annoyed to be in that bee outfit, but he looks so sweet. So there's that book. And that pretty much covers, sorry, there's something poking out the book there. That covers what I got from family in terms of actual gifts. Um, I did get some money from other family members. So that was very sweet of them as well. And you've already seen some of the stuff I've bought last week. Um, what else? Oh, the one thing I've got that isn't from London that came in the mail after I got back was an order that I placed with Shabbat Garn, German indie dye yarn brand, um, and one of the one of the owners, Joanna, is one of my test knitters for my my shawl design, and she also she she offered to send a skein for the September knit along as a prize. And I had uh, planned on ordering a couple of skeins of yarn from her anyway, so I thought, why don't you just, I'll place an order and you just chuck the skein in with the order so you don't have to like send a second package. So she sent this skein of lovely rainbow gorgeousness, which is their Somewhere Over the Rainbow colorway on bot socks, which is 75% wool, 25% polyamide, 420 meters per 100 grams, and it's grey with rainbow colourway striped into it, which I think is really fun. And so this will be one of the prizes for the September knit vlog. And the yarn that I ordered, I ordered one skein of their Merino 100% Aran weight in the concrete jungle. This is a single ply Merino. Got a bit of fuzz on it. Cat hair gets everywhere in this house. And it's really beautiful. It's a grey base with hints of purple and blue in there. It's really lovely, and I think this would make a lovely hat for someone. I'm not entirely sure who for yet. And I also got a skein of their soft socks in the Lavender Horizon colorway. This is 80% merino, 20% polyamide, 400 meters in 100 grams. It's really soft, really beautiful colors. I love the purples, the blues, the greens. It's just really fun. I'm not sure if this will be socks or a shawl yet. I haven't quite decided. Um, right, so another thing that came in the mail that was waiting for me when I got to London was a swap package. I did a swap with Vanessa from the Kilter Craft podcast. Hi Vanessa. And she's already shown what I sent her in her last episode. And, and she sent me something. And I'm so excited to share that with you now. And this is, what the, this is what the package came in. And so she sent me, let me get all this stuff out. Okay, so I think she sent me some really fun tea bags and she's written a note on here that these are, um, it's the English tea shop Berry Boost Pomegranate and Blueberry Iced Tea. So it's, ice, it's tea bags to be made in, with ice. So you can make iced tea with them. That's the note she left, and she's left instructions on there for how to make iced tea with it. And I am really excited to give that a go. And it smells lovely. She sent me some Pop Rocks candy, explaining candy. She's wrote me a 
sent me a sweet card. So adorable. How cute is that card? It says on the back, do embrace all that is granny chic and give it a forever home. Which is, so sweet, which is a really cute sentiment. She left me a really lovely note on the inside, which I'm not going to read. And she sent me this beautiful skein of uh, fiber spates, scrumptious four ply sport sport weight. I didn't even realize this was sport weight. That's awesome. There's 365 meters in 100 grams. That is so beautifully soft and squishy and lovely. Oh, it's so fluffy. And it's so fluffy and soft and squishy and adorable. Oh, I love this yarn. And I love this color. This teal is beautiful. And she also sent me a lovely little collection of mini skeins. And she did say that she forgot to include what they are. And so I'm gonna send her a picture and she'll said she'd let me know what each one is. I'm really excited to knit these into my blanket. I think I know what this one is. If I'm not mistaken, Vanessa, is this some of your grenadine? that you're using for your brioche delicious shawl that you're currently knitting. I think that might be the, what that one is. But yeah, I'm lovely colors. They're all very Van Vanessa colors, the pinks and the purples. It's kind of why I associate with Vanessa. Um, yeah, sorry, that one came undone. And finally, she sent me a very, very sweet little bag that she made. The little socks on it, they're so cute. And it's adorable. And thank you, Vanessa. It's a really well made bag. I love the bag. Ooh, a really nice wide bottom, very wide gusset bottom there. So this would be great for socks or any sort of project. Uh, it doesn't have to be a sock project bag, considering there are socks all over the front of it. And uh, it's got a cute little handmade label there. So. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to using that soon as well. So that was a lovely package from Vanessa. So thank you so much, Vanessa. That was so sweet of you. And I also went to Loop while I was in London. I met up with Leah from the All You Knit Is Love podcast and we had an awesome time at Loop. We had so much fun and bought lots and lots of yarn and just in general had a really good time. And then we did a little swap. We went to a little coffee shop afterwards, had a coffee and she had a tea and um, we had a little, we did a little swap together. I'll show you quickly what she sent me. She sent me, she gave me this really cute um, journal. It's like a travel journal. It's got all sorts of like different sections in here and stuff, which is really sweet and I really love it. So I'll be using that soon. I had intended on using it when we went to New York, but I accidentally left it in London when we, when we were going. So I couldn't take it with me. She, sorry, she's wrapped everything up so nicely I didn't want to ruin the wrapping. Ooh, cute little lollipop, some amazing smelling lavender, and cute washi tape which is always, always handy to have around, and this the most adorable little bluebird of happiness that she knit up in the yarn I believe that she used for her cabled socks that she designed, really pretty, really adorable little bluebird of happiness there. It's my first one, so thank you, Leah. And yeah, we have a cute little tag on everything. And then in this little bag, lots of little things that she sent. Not sent, gave me, saw in person. Oh, all the mini skeins that she gave me. I didn't get anything yet, yeah, they're all out. So there's some um, Jameson Smith, beautiful green color. There's some opal, which is beautiful. There's some Mad Tosh Light in ink, which is really pretty, dark blue color. There's some Malabrigo Sock in, in, in the Sita colorway. There's some Eden Yarn in Neon Lights, and this is the, this is the yarn she knit the Bluebird of Happiness out of. There's some Cascade Heritage in Charcoal and some O-Loops Gold Sock in Expelliarmus. So this is from their Harry Potter colorways, which is fun. So I'm really, really excited to get some of these knitted into my blanket very soon. And that's everything that Leah gave me. So thank you so much, Leah, that was so sweet of you. And onto what I got from Loop. 
So the first thing I picked up was this skein of the Uncommon Thread in their Tough Sock Base 80% Superwash Blue Face Luster, 20% Nylon, 365 meters in 100 grams. And this is destined to become Socks for Perry. He loves orange. So I sent him a picture of this before I bought it and I said, if I make socks for you out of this, will you wear it? He said, probably. I was like, okay, well, yes, you're gonna wear it. So this is gonna become Socks for Perry. It's lovely tonal yarn and I'll probably have to use a contrast heel and maybe a contrast toe in order to get this to stretch for him because he likes a long leg on his socks. Next, I picked up a couple of skeins of Misty Alpaca sock yarn this this was the first skin i picked up it's beautiful blue color this is colorway number hs57 it's 50 percent alpaca 30 percent merino wool 10 percent silk and 10 percent nylon and it is beyond soft this is possibly the softest sock yarn i've ever felt it is so soft it is like next to skin soft and i love this colorway you guys already know that I love blue and oranges together. This is so beautiful. So beautifully variegated together. And the other one I picked up, won't be any surprise to you at all, it's purples and greens. <laughs> so my two favorite color combos, orange and blue, purple and green. Um, my mum said she really liked this one. So this will probably become socks for my mum at some point, as much as I love this colorway, it will have to be socks for my mum. Yeah, so these were really fun. They had a bunch of different colorways to pick from. And after I'd seen the socks that Danny from Little Bobbins had knit using this yarn, um, she had a different colorway. I was like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna have to get me a couple of skeins of this. And the last thing I got was something I almost didn't see in the back of the, in, not even at the back, it was right at the front, but it was on the, one of the bottom shelves. It, was, it wasn't really anywhere um, particular sort of like, Particularly obvious and I sort of just saw it in by chance really and uh, it's it's yarn by a company called I'm not gonna pronounce this completely wrong it's Shilaster Shilaster that's the name Shilaster and it's a luxury four ply weight it's the Sky Yarn Company it's 200 meters in 50 grams so 220 yards in 50 grams and it what got me was the fiber content for this. It's a combination of fibers that I've never knit with before. 10% cashmere, 10% baby camel, 40% angora, and 40% merino lamb's wool. I mean, have you ever heard of a fiber combo like that before in a yarn? And it was incredibly affordable for what it was. It's really soft, but it feels quite um, it's, it's not rough by any means and it is definitely next to skin soft but it's not the softest yarn you've ever felt it's definitely one of those it's weird it's hard to describe how it feels but it is definitely next to skin soft so I picked up these three colors to go together in a shawl that I will be designing at some point in the future um, I just really like these colors together and Leah helped me decide. I was sort of umming and ahhing about whether to have a purple here or like a rosy red color, but I ended up sticking with the purple. So thank you, Leah, for helping me with that. Um, yeah, and like I said, it was incredibly affordable for the fiber content and the um, yardage that you get. And uh, so this one is called Fleece Cloud. So the unique Highland Cloudscape blends this natural um, or self color shade its name so this is a natural colorways undyed I imagine I think or if it is it's, it's a natural shade then there is this one the screen one which is called juniper so the shrubby juniper lodges in the crannies of cliff sorry shrubby juniper lodges in the crannies of cliff faces on sky but it's storm battered exterior conceals a wonder of color toning within So that's the inspiration for that one. So this whole range of yarn is called the Highland Inspirations range. And this one, this purple one is called Autumn Moors. 
And the inspiration for this one is the late afternoon sun catching coastal moors in full season bloom suggests the name of this colour tone. So these are beautiful. I think they'll be really lovely together. And that is it for my London section of this acquisition haul bit-ish. Anyway, um, back to present day me in Oman. Right, see you guys next time. Bye. Right, and we're back again. And I did actually get a couple of other things in the mail uh, before before I left to come to Oman but I was thinking about bringing them to show you but I think I'll wait and show you guys next week got a really exciting package from Hedgehog Fibers my first sock club shipment arrived and oh my god I can't wait to show you guys another reason why I didn't want to bring it this week is just in case someone hadn't received it yet I didn't want to spoil it for anyone um right so moving on to a couple of newish sections for the podcast. First up is yarn dyeing experiments. I showed you guys a sneak peek on Instagram last week of some of the yarn that I dyed up as part of the dialogue for the Rose Hip, Knit, Rose Hip Chick podcast. She, um, as it happened, I won some food dyes, some of this queen rainbow food colours as part of the travel knit along that she did. I won a prize and part of it, some, one of it was these food dyes and uh, it also has this sort of like colour blending chart on the back which was quite useful and I'll explain that in a second but I basically I bought some Lion Brand you know plain white sockies yarn when I was in the US and with the intention of trying my hand at some yarn dyeing and so these are the little colours that I came up with and I also had some leftover Cascade fingering, heritage sock fingering yarn that I'd used for my um, For the Love of Rainbows shawl design. I had a bit of that left over and I'm trying to find the skeins that were that. These, these two when, were from the Cascade yarns. Um, so actually the very first skein that I dyed is probably one of my favourites. I think it was this one actually. It was this rainbow skein obviously. Of course it had to be rainbows. And that's how that one turned out. Really like how that worked out in the end. And I did a hand painting method and I used the microwave to heat set the yarn, to heat set the dye rather. And then just rinsed it out and hung it up to dry. And it worked out pretty well. I had looked around online for a few video tutorials to see how to do it. Even Hannah from Rose Hip Chick had done a photo tutorial at the end of one of her episodes for how to dye yarn on the, on the using pots on the stove but I wanted to try the hand I wanted to use the microwave just because it's quicker and a little bit less sort of time intensive and I knew I didn't have much time before I left for Oman and I really wanted to do this before I left to enter into her knit her dialogue and I was chatting with Regina from the Her Splat Regina podcast and she'd done some she dyed some yarn for the for the dialogue and I asked her how she did it and she pointed me towards a, um, a channel on YouTube called Chem Knits and I'll link that in the show notes for you guys as well and um, there's a video on there showing exactly how to hand paint yarn using food dyes and heat set it in the microwave so um, I will like I said I will link that for you guys and that's basically the tutorial I used to do my yarns I just thought I'd show you some of the other ones that I did. And this one was a little bit different. I did this one and where is it? Was it this one? No, it wasn't this one. It was basically, I did these two pretty much at the same time, but I basically used pretty much the same colors on them. This one didn't turn out the best. It was, it, got really muddy it was meant to be purples and greens and it still kind of is but it has all kind of just blended together and gone a bit meh but with this one it was also purples and greens but I like how this one turned out better because after I'd finished um, adding the colour to it 
and I'll explain why I did that in a second. But after I finished adding the colour to it, I went around with the with the food dye and just added drops of concentrated food dye of the yellow and a bit of the blue around the place. And I really like what that did to the yarn compared to this one, which turned into like a muddy mess. Um, so the way I did the dyes was the, the package doesn't actually say how many drops to use for how much water or anything because you know it's intended to be food dyes so you just add as much as you want until you get the right colour but it does have this blending chart on the back give you an idea of what colours how much of each colour to mix with the other to get a certain sort of shade and I was really concerned about getting really pastel colours that um, that seems to be quite synonymous with food dyeing, uh, food dyes with yarn. And I, I wanted to try and avoid that as much as possible because I'm not a massive fan of the pastel shades. And I mean, some of the colors have come out a little bit pastel, but I really don't mind that at all. Um, I just wanted the majority to be quite saturated. This is just blues and oranges. And so what I did was I, for every four tablespoons of water, I did a double concentration of what the blending colors said. So if the if the blending chart said three red and four blue drops to get purple, I just doubled that. So I would do six red and eight blue and get a much, I, I always assumed that that would just give you a more saturated color. And it seems to have worked for the most part. Uh, with this one, after I added the dyes, the colors that I diluted with water, I again went round with the yellow and just did drops of yellow. Um, you can see and I, and the drop of it there. And that was just straight from the food dye bottle. Uh, so it was super concentrated and the spots. And I really like what that did to the yarn. Um, the ones where I added drops direct from the food dye bottle rather than from the diluted ones, those are the ones that um, gave off quite a bit of colour after I washed them. They um, they didn't bleed massively, but it was just the excess dye because it was so concentrated. But otherwise they all washed clear afterwards with soap and stuff. Um, I'll show you a couple more. I really like this one. This one was, is one of my favourites as well. And again, I added drops of yellow afterwards. I found drops of yellow worked the best. I did also add some drops of blue and red, I think, to this one after I was done. And there's this one, which I also like how this turned out. This was like oranges, not oranges, sorry, reds, blues, purples and greens. You can see a bit here turned a bit pink. Then these two were actually really quite fun. These two I dyed together. So I dyed them at the same time using the same literally on the same bit of cling film. So these are basically identical mini skeins. And I just wanted to give that a go and see how that would turn out, if it would work or not. But it did, it's, these are pretty much identical mini skeins. If I can get them to line up properly in the right sections. But yeah, so I like how that turned out. That was fun. Then I did another sort of rainbow, rainbow effect one. Then I was going for like a sunset theme of like oranges and yellows and then one of the other ones that I'd wrapped up next to it, some of the dyed come out and bled onto this one. Oh well, stuff happens. This is my favourite scheme. This was a complete experiment to see how it would turn out. This one I took the bare hank mini scheme, laid it out on the cling film and just went at it with dye straight from the dye bottles. I, none of the diluted stuff, this is straight from the from the food dye bottles. So super concentrated food dye. And yeah, I love how this turned out. I, I only have four colors of food dye. Um, red, blue, green, and yellow. I just went at it. There's drops everywhere. And then once I'd done one side, I turned the skein over and did the bottom. And I really love how this turned out. 
there are places where the colours have all mixed together and it's really dark and there's still white bits in places and I'm really excited to see how this will knit up. And I posted the picture of these yarns on Instagram and my friend uh, Josie, who's the yarn dyer behind Dubai Knits Yarns, whose uh, skein I'm giving, one of her skeins I'm giving away as my giveaway prize for the 2000 subscribers, she commented me like, how much do you want for that one? I will buy it from you, which was a huge compliment from her. But it made me laugh because I, I reread my post and realized I hadn't actually explained that they were mini skeins, but I thought it was obvious. And then I realized it probably wasn't. So I let her know, I was like, Josie, you didn't realize these aren't full size skeins, they're just minis. <laughs> she was like, what? I said, I'm gonna try and dye that one again, this one, on a full size skein and see how it turns out. And if it turns out well, I'll be sending it to her. So I might try and do two because I want one for myself. I'd love socks in that colorway if it knits up nicely. But a few people have asked me what I'm gonna do with these minis. Truth of the matter is I have no idea. Um, I was thinking most, a lot, I'll probably add, um, add them to my sock yarn blanket, my Cozy Memories blanket. Um, I might use some for giveaways as part of giveaway pack prizes or um, as part of swaps that I do with people. I'm not, a couple, again, a couple of people have asked me if I'm going to be selling, if I'm going to be dyeing yarn to sell in my Etsy shop. I'm not going to say no, I'm not going to say never, but at the moment, well, for one thing, I wouldn't be comfortable selling yarn that's dyed, that's been dyed with food dye. I don't think that's a particularly professional thing to do. But also, I don't, Feel confident enough yet I don't feel like I know enough I don't know anywhere near enough about dyeing yarn to feel confident about having a go at it with acid dyes yet I may want to at some point I just don't feel like I have the right amount of knowledge yet I want to experiment more with food dyes and kind of get a bit more familiar with different dyeing techniques before I start experimenting with the toxic stuff if that makes sense so that's what I've done so far I really like the colours. A few people have said that it reminds them of tropical birds and I, I totally get that. Um, and I'm definitely going to be having more fun with that in the future and giving that a bit of a go. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for more dyeing adventures. And next time I do it, I think I'm going to try and get it set up so I can film some bits for you guys to share with you because I'd like to bring you guys along on my dyeing adventures, as it were. Um, Another thing a lot of you have asked to see about is um, my design process. And I was gonna cover a bit of that this week, but I feel like I've really waffled on quite a bit and I still have a few other things I wanna talk to you guys about. So I am going to, um, I'll, I'll talk to you guys about that next week. And what I will do is I'm gonna talk to you guys about my design process for the Vida Shawl, which I did have behind me on the sofa but it fell down. <laughs> so this is the Vida Shawl. You guys have probably seen it a bunch of times now because I've been showing it for the last couple of weeks. Um, I really like it. So I'm just gonna put this on my lap. It's a bit chilly in here now with the air conditioning. Um, and I will be explaining some of the processes, some of the thoughts and the, um, the ways I went about designing it, I guess, to share a bit with you guys. I'm not entirely sure how much of my design process I'm going to be sharing or feel comfortable with sharing um, with you guys because I still feel like I'm really new to this whole, I am really new to this whole designing thing. I'm really new to this whole knitting thing really in the grand scheme of things. So I'm, I don't know, I don't want to put information out there that's not necessarily correct. It may work for me but it might not work for everyone. My methods are by no means um, like meticulous in any way i my designing seems to be quite um i use the word organic i guess it kind of just happens and it's a bit messy it's not particularly neat <laughs> i just find a thing that works and i just i understand my own notes i'm pretty sure if i gave my notes to anyone else they wouldn't really know what they were looking at i'll give you a little teaser for example um that's a good one to show you I, bring, I did bring them with me because I was going to show you this week, but like I said, I feel like I've been babbling on a lot already. So, you know, my, my notes, my designing tend to look a lot like that most of the time. 
a bunch of scribbles on a page and that is actually relatively neat for me usually it's worse than that it's all over the place it's you know I've got stuff scrawled on both sides of random pieces of paper it's all a bit messy but as like I said I will share some things with you I'll share stuff about my inspirations and um sort of maybe other ways other how I developed a stitch pattern maybe or something and we'll see how it goes I have a few ideas of things that I can share with you and hopefully you guys will be interested in that um like I said I'll talk more about that next week with you guys um all right moving on to week in review so what's been happening <laughs> this last week not a whole lot really to be honest um last weekend we went to Saudi Arabia. I know I briefly touched on this last episode, but I didn't really go on about it too much. We spent the week, uh, we spent the Friday in Saudi Arabia. We left early in the morning. I had to go back to renew my exit permit. It was only valid for three months or something. And I had to go back to do that before we left for Oman because it would have expired, expired whilst we were here. And so we were, we thought since we had to go back, for the day to get that done, um, we may as well go to Ikea. There were a couple of things I wanted to get uh, for my craft room, which I managed to get, which was great. And and yeah, thankfully the, the visa renewal, the exit permit renewal thing is just something that has to be done online. Someone's got to do it from Perry's office and they said it was fine to do it on a Friday. So that was all good. Um, it was a relatively good, relatively productive trip. Going to Saudi Arabia is never particularly exciting. There's never really, and especially on a Friday when it's, you know, everywhere's pretty quiet. But it wasn't too bad. IKEA didn't open until 1.30. So we went and hung out at Perry's office in the morning. Perry got some work done and I got some knitting done and caught up with some podcasts. I'm still behind on. It feels like every time I, I think that I'm about to catch up and I'm about to get there, then a whole bunch more come out. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna catch a break at this point but it's fine because I enjoy all the podcasts that I do watch and it's really fun to catch up with you guys and finally actually start to get up to date with most people um the weather around here is still pretty hot and humid it's it's a little bit better in Oman but in Bahrain it's still really humid humidity is over it's around 70 80 percent most days it's even worse in the evenings um and it's still pretty hot during the days Honestly, I was, I was speaking to someone about this a while ago and I was like, we literally live on a desert island. Bahrain is a desert island. Um, it hadn't really occurred to me until a couple of weeks ago, but I was like, yeah, you see all the, you know, you hear all those things. People talk about, oh, what would you take to a desert island? If you were stranded on a desert island, what would you want to have? I know what I would want to have. I would want to have a room with air conditioning. That's what I want on a desert island. I don't want like a particular book or music or whatever. I I want air conditioning. <laughs> I do not cope well with the heat. Um, most people are quite surprised to hear that. I am not a hot weather person at all, yet I live in the desert. Um, I'm really bad at regulating my body temperature. Um, most people who know me may know this, but I, if I get cold, I get really cold. And if I get hot, I get really hot. Um, I really struggle to balance my body temperature. Uh, we were out by the pool the other day for about two hours, two and a half hours. I was in the shade the whole time. Don't know how, but I still managed to get a tan, but I was in the shade the whole time. And after about two and a half hours, I'm having cold drinks the whole time and there's a guy who walks around and hands out cold towels which is amazing but um, it was still really really hot and I, I was looking around I was like I don't understand how these people do it I don't understand how people can lay out in the sun when it's like this hot and not be bothered by it and we came back up to the room and it took me about 20 minutes to cool down again Perry was fine in a couple minutes. He, I mean, he saw, he thought it was really hot as well, but he sort of got back to normal, as it were, within a couple of minutes of getting back to the room. But I was so overheated. I was just, I was just laying there. Perry's like, do you have heat stroke or something? I was like, I have no idea, but I'm way too hot. I'm way overheated. It took me a long time. Like, you know, I had to wash my face a couple of times and sort of just 
change clothes into something that wasn't as hot because I'd been outside. It wasn't great. But but the same thing happens to me in extremes of cold. I just don't cope well with extremes of temperatures. <laughs> but this is another thing that maybe sounds a bit weird. I prefer cold weather to hot weather. And I was keep, keep saying this to Perry as well. I was like, there's a massive difference. I enjoy the cold weather when I'm, you know, appropriately dressed for it. I don't like being cold, but I like cold weather. I love the snow. Snow's amazing to me. Um, so, so yeah. I, I also think the cold is easier to cope with than the heat because you can always put on more clothes, but there is only so many clothes you can, there's only so much you can take off when you're hot. So, um, Anyway, little rant over about the weather. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so we've had a really good time in Oman so far. We got off, our seats were upgraded at the gate on the way out. I think the flight was overbooked or something, but it was a tiny plane, one of those really teeny tiny planes. And um, so that was, a little, that was a bit of fun to get upgraded at the gate randomly. Um, we've had a really relaxing time here. Perry told the hotel it was my birthday, so they so they gave us a cake and a bottle of Prosecco to celebrate, which was really lovely. And it's just been nice not having to do anything. We've The hotel is actually a resort. So there are three hotels in this resort. The one we're staying in is the, no, it's billed as being the adults only hotel. Well, they recently, I think they've started to allow children to stay in the hotel, but the beach and the pool for this particular hotel is adults only, so there's no kids down by the pool or at the beach. But the other two hotels are family friendly and they also have like beaches and pools and stuff where the kids are allowed to go. The one we're in is um, sort of separate from that. And the way the hotels are set up, the hotel that we're in is actually pretty much on a cliff as it were. The other two hotels are down in the bay sort of area of the, down the cliff on the on the bottom so it's really nice we've got really lovely views of the from our balcony of the pool and the and the gulf of oman and it's really nice i love oman i love this place this hotel is really lovely um it's been really like i said it's been really relaxing it's been great for perry to catch up on sleep and just to relax and not have to worry about stuff he's been able to catch up on some schoolwork and you know i've been doing a lot of knitting as even as you could probably tell and it's just been great it, it was a couple of times where we've been sat around and just been like i feel like we should be doing something because <laughs> we're always doing something at home and there's always something to be done so um being away and not having anything to do is a little bit not disconcerting but it's a strange feeling it's a strange feeling but it's nice to just be able to relax and do nothing for a while uh, but I am looking forward to getting back home and getting back to uh, my sewing machine and getting back to doing some of the things I've been looking forward to doing for a while now. Um, what else was I going to say? I've I've taken a bunch of video clips from around the resort to put together into a little video clip for you guys at the end here. So hopefully that will work out and you guys will get a little taste of what we've been seeing, I guess, what the resort is like, what the hotel's like and stuff. And um, and yeah, so I will include that at the end of the video here for you guys. And I think that pretty much sums it up for this week. I don't think I have anything else to add. Um, just checking my notes here. Yeah, I think that pretty much pretty much covers it. So thank you very much for joining me this week. Um, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Like always, if you have any questions or suggestions for me, there is a questions and suggestions thread on the podcast. And make sure you enter into the 2000 subscriber giveaway. You do have to be a member of the Ravelry group to enter, but it's free, so it's not going to cost you anything. So you should join. It's a lot of fun. We have a very chatty group. I do feel a little bit bad that I've not been particularly chatty this week um, on the Ravelry group. I've been trying to not be on my phone or on the computer too much whilst we're away. I've been trying to really sort of disconnect a bit. We haven't disconnected completely, but I've been checking every now and again, but I've been a bit slow, a bit slower at replying to comments and messages and stuff lately. um, Because like I said, I've not wanted to spend too much time. I do check it and I do read all your comments and I have read all the comments in the group and on Instagram and Etsy and everywhere that you've been contacting me. I have been reading all of them. 
if I haven't replied yet, it's because I haven't had the, I haven't had, um, I haven't wanted to spend too much time on the computer and I really want to spend the, spend the time to properly answer your, your messages in detail. So, um, if I haven't got back to you already, I will be getting back to you soon once I'm back home, that is. So thank you again. <laughs> Sorry, I keep rambling. Every time I think I've had a finish, I'm rambling on. Um, so yeah, so thank you very much for tuning in and for sticking with me this week and for coming back if you're a returning viewer. If you're new, I hope you enjoyed what you see and I look forward to seeing you guys again next week. So take care. Bye.